Hello, this is Angie Monko, your holistic divorce coach for women. Today I want to talk about how to stop blaming your ex and start to heal. And as long as we blame our ex for how we think and for how we feel, we'll remain victims um, and powerless to change or move forward. So I've, I want to start by telling you the story of Janice, um, from first kiss to self-kindness. So Janice is sitting in a cafe and she's talking with her best friend and she's just sort of staring out the window. She's just been told like a week before that by her husband, she was blindsided that he wants a divorce. Um, and it's a spring day and she's reminiscing about the very time of the year when she met her first met her husband, Brian, and um, they met at a road party. Um, for more notes about this story, just check out the call note or the notes and you'll see what it's all about. So Janice began dating Ra, uh, Brian when she was 16 years old and she was immediately smitten with him and she looked across uh, the crowd and she saw him. He's tall, dark, handsome and she just said they, their eyes locked and whenever she looked into his eyes he always made her feel like she was the only one on the planet and so he approached her and they began talking and he invited her to go to, down a walk in this lane. It's a, a road parties where a bunch of teens gather for socializing around alcohol. So there's drinking going on. And so they're walking down this lane and uh, this road and um, she trips in one of the potholes and he picks her up like a feather and they look at each other and they just know. And so that's when they have their first kiss. And after that, he actually moved into town from out of state to be with her. And she always felt like she was his princess. So six years later, they get married. Two years later, they have their first child. Two years later after that, they have their second child, making their family of four perfect, right? And complete. And, and so Leslie, her friend is sitting across from her. And she's like, hey, are you here, you know? Um, Leslie asked her, she said, Janice, were there any signs, you know? Because everybody is so shocked. And she said, yes. Um, at first I was blindsided, but I've been doing some soul searching and I realized there were signs, big neon signs of how, you know, we, he, we'd stopped spending time together and we were putting everybody else first before ourselves. And um, so there were many signs. Can you relate to her story at all? Uh, and at first she wanted to blame him for everything, but then she began to realize that um, it wasn't all on him. So at first Janice was very, very upset, of course, and just wondered how could he do this to us? Doesn't 31 years together warrant a, at least a conversation to try to make things better? And on and on. Um, 10 years later, she's happily single, um, and they even are amicable at family functions for their with their kids. And uh, what she said her biggest lesson was is learning to tune into herself, to really pay attention to herself. Was she being kind, loving, and nurturing to herself no matter what? And she found that by loving and accepting and forgiving herself that this self-advocacy bled over into all of her other relationships. It was self-love was sort of an insurance that she would always be safe and supported in the world. So it took her several years of holding on to grudges and resentments to be able to heal and to move forward. So after a time, Janice just realized, you know, that she was the one that was keeping herself from feeling better. And she thought, I deserve to feel better. So I invite you to do this little self-inquiry practice. Set aside one hour and have a heart to heart with yourself. Ask yourself three questions. One, did you witness any signs of disconnection before your divorce? Like not spending as much time together, not having those talks, those tough conversations where you express how you truly felt, um, not sitting next to each other on the couch. Two, is it possible that your communication style, which might be quiet and avoidant, contributed to the divorce because you didn't express your needs and wants? And if so, how? Three, how can you grieve what once was and go forward? Getting a divorce, even if you initiated it, is a time to grieve and to honor that time together. Uh, so what are the consequences to continuing to blame our ex? Um, blaming impedes the healing process 
by affecting us physically, emotionally, and mentally. So one, stress takes a toll on our physical health, uh, lowering our immune system, and there's a definite mind-body connection. There's a great book called Messages from the Body by Michael Lincoln, PhD, if you wanna check that out. Number two is blame and anger towards our ex keeps us stuck in a vicious cycle where as long as we blame them for something, for our anger, this energy of anger will repel the things that we truly want in life, like happy relationships and fulfilling experiences. And three, dwelling on the past can take a mental toll on us, uh, which can lead to anxiety and depression. We may begin to form beliefs about groups of people like men, like all men are jerks or something like that. And that kind of generalization can lead to distorted thinking, which is not really based in truth. I'm guilty of the blame game. I, I know that for years I, I, had, I had many arguments with myself as to why my ex was responsible for my choices. Um, but that's not accurate. Um, my higher self knows that nobody can make me feel a certain way. That, that's based on my choices. Um, what if we were not to blame our ex or ourselves and just realize that sometimes things happen and that's the way they're supposed to be. We were supposed to get divorced because we did. Um, something better is around the corner for me. Um, now, I'm not trying to minimize the divorce. I know how painful it is, um, but I'm expanding our view of it so that we can make friends with reality. Because when we beat our heads against the wall of the past, we'll get a bloody head. So I invite you to check out in the comments my link to the next three secrets to survive the stress of divorce. I'm here for you.